Welcome back to the Psychedelic Archives. My name is Nathaniel Pearl, and today I'm going to share with you a story of one of my earlier trips with psilocybin, or also known as magic mushrooms or shrooms. And this experience was quite intense. Probably the, one of the most intense experiences I've ever had in any of the psychedelic experiences, and one that stuck with me up until today. So, with some context, this happened in 2015. And I was coming, there was a lot of things happening in my life, a lot of shedding of old skin. I went through a, a pretty bad breakup with my ex. We were together for about seven years. And the, my dog also passed away at that time frame. It was a very hard moment. Dog I grew up with my whole life. And also moving out of my parents' house all kind of collided all together in 2015. So it was a heavy year. A lot of changes, a lot of challenges, and this psychedelic experience kind of uh, put an exclamation mark on the chapter of that page. Before I go into the story, I'd just like to offer you you all the invitation to send me a message, whether it's through the YouTube comments or privately in Messenger on Facebook. Or in my email, you can check the psychedelicarchives.com. And there's an email you can follow if you want to join me in if you want to join me on this podcast and share your story. The door open now for offering stories, so I will start to gather guests and share some of that as well. If you are enjoying these short videos or shorter videos, they're still pretty long, about 20, 30 minutes. But if you listen to Curious Chimps, we go for over an hour, two hours sometimes. If you're enjoying this, please feel free to click the subscribe button below. It'd be nice to have you join in and see the weekly progress of the show and see how it evolves because I think it's an exciting project. We're getting a lot of, I'm getting a lot of feedback and private messages from people that are enjoying these stories and actually want to start sharing. So uh, it's really encouraging. So thank you all. So just press the subscribe button and stay tuned. This psychedelic experience with mushrooms was quite intense. I There's only a few key moments that really stick in my mind. It's been many years since, but the overall story is still there, so I'll share it with you. And just to give a little bit more context, with all those life situations that were happening at the same time, I was in a weird state where I don't know if I was depressed, but I was more exhausted with life. And I remember very vividly, I was driving down this underpass. And I remember thinking, if I drove through this light and someone hit me and I died, I'd be okay with it. Now, I wasn't going to do it, but I was okay with the idea of it happening. And these are new thoughts. At the time, I never had thoughts like that in my life. And I wasn't worried, but I also, I just said it like it was meaningless in a sense, where I didn't really think of this wide, the weight of that statement. I just remember thinking, yeah, if I get hit right now, perfect. I, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm happy with that. And it wasn't coming from like a place of, I'm content with life. And if I died here, <laughs> booyah. I was more coming from a place of like, I, I quit kind of thing. And that's, that was a little bit worrisome looking back at it. In the moment, I just said it. You know, there wasn't much weight behind it, but it was the state of mind I was in. So then I think a few weeks after that, me and a few friends, we did the mushrooms. We went up north. We went camping, actually. And we we pitched a tent, a big tent, and we had a fire. It was uh, about 4 or 5 p.m. And we all decided to take the mushrooms. And I went for a bigger dose the, the famous heroic dose that Terrence McKenna calls it, the five grams. I may have even taken more. I don't remember the exact amount, but it was over five grams. And then we all decided to go for a hike. So let's just walk through these trails, see what happens. So I, we all take it, and then we're walking, and I have my music in my ears. Uh, and we're walking and walking, and I start feeling the effects of the mushrooms hit me so hard, like instantly. Usually it takes me about an hour before I start feeling... The I like to call it, um, I like to, to start off the feeling, like describe it as you feel gravity. You just start feeling like there's a weight, like you're flowing through like this 
vibrational fluid, which is gravity. And you're just kind of like treading the waters, if you want to call it. So you start to feel that gravitational feeling. And those who've done mushrooms kind of know what I'm talking about. And things start shifting a little bit differently. So if you turn your head, it kind of like slows down a little bit more frame by frame rather than just a swift head movement. At least the visual experience seems like that. So I start feeling all these things and I'm like, oh, this is intense. Like, I don't even know if I can continue walking. So I tell my two friends, I'm like, yo, guys, I'm going to go back to the tent. Uh, it's it's hitting me hard. I'll, I'll see you guys after. And they, they're like, okay, don't, you want us to come with you? I said, no, no, don't worry about it. So I'm walking and I'm going back to the tent. And this is where things get interesting because I don't remember anything. I remember following a few bluish, purplish lines that were beaming from me. Kind of like an like a organic GPS system guiding me to the tent and or like a google maps or something and i don't remember what happened i i just was following these lines and then it was blank and then that was most of my experience was just this state of darkness i was in a huge field of dark and i was cold i was i was really uncomfortable in my skin in my body in my environment and i remember very vividly that I didn't know if I made it back to the tent or not. The sun was going down when we started our walk, or it was getting close to sunset, and I had no idea where I was, who I was, or if I got to the tent, or if I'm in the forest. And I started clawing at things, and I started feeling like, like, I don't even know what to describe it like, but I was feeling like vines and branches but it was not that but it felt like that and earth i felt earth under my hands and i realized that i fucking fell at some point in the forest and i was not in the tent this is what was going on at the moment and i'm just so paralyzed by the experience that i couldn't even move and i'm just i'm there and i'm just like oh, i'm in the forest and then things got even worse I started feeling these vines that I was waving at, hitting, were closing in on my whole body, going around. I remember cocooning my neck, going around my neck, tightening up behind the head, pulling my arms back and back and in. So I was really like extended and my chest was high up and my legs were glued together and my arms were glued to my hips. And I remember this feeling of constriction and it was just like tightening and tightening and tightening. And I was just to the point, I was getting par paranoid and scared and it kept tightening and tightening and tightening to the point where I didn't even have any room to breathe. It didn't feel like I was able to breathe. And it felt like one giant inhale. Like, <gasps> and that was the last thing I had. And I'm lying there paralyzed by this experience. And then nothing, complete darkness. And I'm just, there wasn't even a consciousness. It didn't even feel like anything but an observe, observation that I was stuck. And I remember a voice came in very softly and said, you, were, you wished you were dead. Remember? Didn't you wish you were dead? And I'm just, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even respond. And I'm just paralyzed. And I'm kind of like, holy fuck. And then it said words like this this voice or whatever it was, was telling me, he's like, words have weight. This is what you wanted, right? And it was kind of teasing me a little bit. This is what you wanted. You wanted to die. Now you're dying. Here you go. And I just felt like my body was aging and constricting and tightening. And I didn't know what to do. I thought I was dying. And I was getting terrified. I was starting to really feel like this. I guess you would call it that survival mechanism where that inner animal is starting to, 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 to turn on and now the thought is gone and now it's just completely into survival mode. How the fuck do I survive? And I remember this voice, very subtle, almost in so far back in like the end of a hallway kind of sound. And it said, if you want to live, show me. And at that point, I was like, it felt like I was doing 
I was squirming and freaking out, but nothing was moving. It was just like my soul within my body was moving and my body was dead. And it said, show me, show me how much you want to live. And I remember squeezing as hard as I could, clenching my fists as hard as I could to fight to live. And I never exerted such energy in my life. I've trained super hard over the years. I've ran marathons. I've done quite intense endurance stuff. But the level of exertion that I presented to this experience of energy that I was trying to get out, I can't even quantify it. I was fighting like I've never fought anything before. And I was squeezing my whole body. I was squeezing, trying to break out of this cocoon. And I remember as I'm tensing up and squeezing everything I got, I kept saying, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I want to live, I want to live. And the voice started getting louder and louder. And I started hearing, like, this kind of sound. And that kept going, this this constant rhythm, this beat. And I realized that this rhythm, this beat, was my heart rate, my heartbeat. And it started from zero, where I didn't hear anything, to slowly... And then it just kept getting louder and louder as the more I was squeezing and fighting and squeezing and fighting. And then I was really getting into it. And I started feeling the vice grip around me loosening. And the vines kind of peeling off. I couldn't move yet, but I was still fighting. I was fighting. I was fighting. I knew I wanted to stay alive. I knew I wanted to continue. And I was so apologetic for the words I used. And I didn't realize the severity of what these words meant. I just kind of threw it out there like... If I die now, good kind of thing. Like just not even acknowledging how precious life is and this experience is. You're just taking it for granted per se, you would say. And then I was just fighting. And then I broke out of this cocoon. I remember it was with a huge inhale, like, <gasps> like just like the first breath, like a rebirth in a sense. It really felt like I took my first breath. And then what came after was these waterfall tears, waterfall tears that like the way I describe it is like an anime or those cartoons where, you know, when the cartoon character is crying and it's just like a fountain coming out of the eyes and it's like super unrealistic. That's what it felt like. It was just pouring out of my eyes and I was crying and I was holding myself, squeezing myself and saying, I'll never think like that again. Like I, like life is so precious. I'm so sorry. And I rolled into fetal position and this was really a rebirthing moment because as I'm explaining it to you guys, I'm kind of coming to a new realization that everything I did after waking, breaking out of that cocoon was the actions of a child, you know, crying, taking the first breath, rolling and screaming and squeezing itself and just super un- fresh into this world, not knowing where to, to what to do with their bodies. And the only way they can express is through movement and tears. And I was just holding myself in fetal position on my side. And I was just crying so deeply and so um, passionately and hugging myself. It felt like I never hugged myself before until that moment. And I was squeezing and consolidating and consoling my shoulder and just petting my arm and my hair and just, just celebrating the fact that I pulled through because I didn't think I was going to pull through. I really, I was at death's door in a sense. And coming out of that, I felt so empowered and so loved by myself and that this is where I want to come from. This is what I want to cultivate, that feeling I want to carry forward. And just to add a little uh, conclusion to where I was, I was actually in the tent. (laughs) I thought the whole time I thought I was in the forest and what I was clawing at was probably the the, the roof or the side of the tent and there was a little like a uh, rope or something I remember like uh, I don't know something hanging and I think that was what I kept hitting and that's what I thought was tree branches so it was it, I was convinced that whole time I was on the cold earth of the floor of the forest and then I was going to die there and the darkness was really, there was just no light around. And I guess also I went into a state of paralysis because I really thought I was in the forest. So I just, my body froze. And as I came out of it and I was just in fetal crying and wiping my tears, I hear my friends by the fire. So safety and home was, was 
right around me. My friends were there. Everything was perfect and safe. That I wasn't in the forest. I wasn't lost. I was safe and sound in the tent. And what a way to come out of that death into that to come out of that death into that experience where everything was okay and i just needed to let go and surrender and not even just surrender but to fight for myself and and show up for myself and then the bliss afterwards of knowing that everything's going to be okay with this new found uh power and strength that i that i've cultivated for myself by being there and I guess the main thing I took out of that experience is that words really matter. You know, how you treat yourself, what you say to yourself, these things should never be taken for granted. You know, we always say something about ourselves like, oh, I'm so stupid or I'm an idiot. Or uh, like, you just throw these things out like they're meaningless. But it's really, it's a powerful and heavy um there's a lot of power and heaviness behind these words and weight and we got to treat ourselves better. So that's what I got out of that experience. And from that day on, I never had a thought like that again. I mean, we have our downs, down pitfalls and our down moments, but there's always that space. I know that I wanted to be here and I want to be here and I carry that forward. And hopefully maybe this inspires you to keep carrying it forward, no matter how hard things go get that human spirit is a forever burn forever burning ember that just needs a little ignition sometimes or a little bit of air and then the flame is back but that amber that ember ain't going anywhere till our last breath so there you have it that's how mushrooms saved my life